Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for uh, being here today as we gather to uh, support our kids and shine a light on autism in West Virginia. I'd like to take a moment to recognize all of the families who are with us here today, including Delegate Denise Campbell, right there. <laughs> She's so, so shy, she just sits over there. But anyhow, Denise, it's great seeing you, and I want to thank you all for your continued efforts to support children and families in West Virginia. And today is all about you, and we're honored to have you here at our capital. Across West Virginia, many of our state's residents either experience firsthand or know a child or family who has overcome obstacles and handle the challenges often associated with an autism diagnosis. From providing, from providing these children with quality educational opportunities and proper health care, to finding specialized programming and activities, I understand that every autism diagnosis brings with it unique and sometimes increased needs. As a father, I understand how important it is to make sure that our kids have the care and support they need to live up to their potential, achieve their goals, and lead happy, healthy lives right here at home. Over the past several years, we've made great strides to raise awareness about autism in West Virginia and develop meaningful therapy programs that help those with autism connect and communicate with loved ones, family members, and friends. From the Northern Panhandle to Southern West Virginia, new partnerships are giving our kids the extra attention they need and opening the door to new programs at our colleges and universities. And I applaud the, applaud the work of all of the organizations involved in these efforts to give autistic children and their families the promise of a bright tomorrow. I'd also like to thank Delegate Campbell and members of the legislature for passing a resolution this year to designate April 2nd as West Virginia Autism Awareness Day in West Virginia. And I'm proud to support this effort. And today I'd like to welcome Jill Scarborough McClary to the podium as I proclaim April as Autism Awareness Month in West Virginia. So Jill, you wanna come up? Thank you, Governor Tomlin. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> I promise that I've only got mostly good and true things to say. Um, it's, it's funny that um, this is about the third or fourth opportunity you've offered me this podium. And Autism Awareness Month, you know, we get real busy during Autism Awareness Month. And I've reflected a lot this month. And Here's the one thing I'm aware of. I'm going to cry in a minute, y'all, so <laughs> hold on, Caroline. Um, it's, it's five years that we sat in this room and, and you signed autism insurance legislation into law. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so five years ago, this community stepped forward and a bunch of motivated mamas and papas stormed this Capitol. And we led one of the best campaigns I think this place has ever seen. And because of that, moms and dads, fewer of them hear the words, you, your child has autism. There is treatment that can help them. I'm sorry no one here does it. And I'm sorry there's no insurance coverage for that. Good luck. So passing legislation five years ago gave us access to about 30% of our kids to then get an opportunity to get the best treatment possible for them. And so thank you, Delegate Campbell, Delegate Hunt, Delegate Rodigario, and all of our families that rallied the troops and said, we gotta do something because this isn't okay. Well, we've made a lot of progress because let me introduce you today to some of the kids in the back who at two years had an opportunity to get treatment. And let me tell you, right now today, Governor Tomlin, there is a little boy from Logan County who had to hear, give me just a couple of months because I'm opening a clinic. 
So in the meantime, there's a thing at WVU that's distance learning. So go ahead and get started. Give me just a couple months and I'll get back to you. That little boy, not quite three years old, couldn't speak a word. His birth to three provider said, we didn't know what to, we tried sign language, we tried pecs, we tried everything. And it really didn't look good. That little boy today is in a kindergarten classroom in Logan County doing better than every other kid in that classroom. Thank you, five years ago, we had an opportunity. Let me also introduce you to Dr. Ezra Hall in the back of the classroom. By classroom, this is my classroom. We're gonna have church, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Dr. Hall is a recent PhD graduate from the University, West Virginia University Behavior Analysis Program. Um, after graduating, he and his wife, um, Jocelyn, who is also a, one of, I think, two now in the state psychology board certified behavior analysts in the state. They went to, to Florida for a while, but guess what? They get hired. First, Jocelyn got hired because women are cool like that and got hired by Cabell Huntington Hospital. And then, and then Ezra sent, his, sent me his resume and I said, yes, please come. I've got a job for you and he's from Fairmont. So we have made great strides, great strides, and we're continuing to make strides. But let's not forget we got miles to go before we sleep. Let's not forget every individual on the autism spectrum comes with unique and beautiful gifts and unique and difficult challenges, and let's not ignore them. Let's realize that children become adults. Where are they gonna live? Where are they gonna work? What happens to them when mom and dad are no longer there to care for them? That's gotta change. Right now, here's one thing that can change right now. I got an issue with Medicaid, not the waiver program. No, it's got a lot of heat. I'm talking straight up Medicaid. Um, right now, federally, Medicaid has said you must cover autism treatment, right? Including applied behavior analysis. However, there are roadblocks to providers being able to do, do that. Right now there are about five providers in the state. I, as a provider, can sign up to provide services to PEIA, CHIP, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, TRICARE, any insurance provider. I, as a provider, cannot sign up to bill Medicaid. That's a problem. That can be fixed right now. That's a simple policy change. I don't have to pass another law. I can change some policy. That needs to happen. So anyway, what I would love to see is, again, we've done a lot of work to gain autism awareness. We're very aware. I'm aware, Charleston, we have a problem. It's time to move past autism awareness and make every single day autism action day. Autism action month is what I would love to see happen. Again, take a minute, celebrate. We've made a lot of strides. That West Virginia has a long history of making strides. From Dr. Ruth Sullivan, who founded the Training Center, that's a shining light. The college program at Marshall University, that's a shining light. We have several shining lights, but we got a lot of dark, deep holes. Let's not forget. So, thank you for the opportunity to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for being here today and what you do for our children in West Virginia.